And uh, now we have the uh, fourth, the fourth point. Fourth point is practice and mind training in daily life. We have, remember, seven points of mind training, right? This is the fourth. This point, practice for one's whole life, has two sections. What to do during one's life, one. And what to do at death, two. So this, uh, this, this, this uh, fourth point. So the first is what to do during one's life. The slogan, number 18. Practice the five strengths, the essence of the instructions. Again, there are a number, five strengths. <laughs> five strengths. Uh, don't worry, you can, uh, you can learn, uh, you can study slowly, you know. It's like maybe uh, within two years, and then you can completely uh, become a like Kadamba, Kadamba master. <laughs> Kadamba master means, uh, student means like people who uh, practice the only the oral instructions, right? That's Kadamba students. So these, these, these slogans are the oral instructions of Kardam masters. You remember? Selengba, and then we have this um, uh, the Ndom, uh, uh, Adesha, then we have the Ndomtomba, then we have Putoba, then we have Sharaba, then we have uh, Chakawa. Chakawa. So this is the Chakawa. So this seven point mind training from him, we uh, we appreciate we appreciate you, okay? <laughs> <laughs> we have we have the oral instructions now because of you. So that means what he uh, if you want to make him happy, uh, then you have to practice. And that's the only make them happy. Only way, only way, the only way to your teachers make happy, you uh, practice, you, you, you need to develop these three qualities, wisdom, faith, and diligence. Then you really can make them happy. So the practice, the five strengths and the essence of the instructions. So this instruction for the first practice of how to engage in mind training in this life is to train in five powers, which are a summary of the essential instructions. We are not able to practice all the important things all the time. For that reason, we need oral instructions. Because instructions, oral instructions, which are easy, easy to practice, at any time during this life. That's, that's the characteristic, that's the definition of the oral instruction. Oral instructions not very complicated and very profound and easy to practice and very necessary in this, our, uh, during, during this life. That's, that's the definition of oral instruction. So this slogan is one of these you know, profound and uh, sort of simple instructions that you should apply in your life. So the five powers. Five powers are the power of strong resolution, the power of familiarization, the power of positive seeds, the power of recognizing problems, and the power of aspiration. These are the five strengths or five powers that you have to remember. So the first of the five power is the power of strong resolution. This means not wasting your time. Instead, you have to strong determination to continue with your practice. New Year, New Year you know, lots of people came to YWCA, okay, this is, 
what is your resolution? Come here, exercise. And maybe like 10 days, 20 days, less and less, less and less. <laughs> then eventually, no people, you know. <laughs> That's not good. That's not strong resolution, right? So, uh, so you, your motivation is extremely important. For the most part, whatever Dharma practice we do, we must go for refuge and arouse bodhicitta. Because the reason we must do so is to increase the power of determination. If you make a promise to yourself, then it gives more power to your practice. That's why I always say the commitment is very important. Therefore, before you practice, you need to first think. From now on, throughout my life, and until I attain enlightenment, I will never part from a bodhicitta mind. For example, like that. Strong resolution. And I will practice the preliminaries. Or I will do this kind of meditation. Or today I will not get angry at anyone. Or today um, I will abandon uh, misdeeds of speech, you know. So uh, if you have a strong determination, uh, its power will naturally increase. So if you make that determination first, your mindfulness will be stable. If you have this kind of determination, then you will naturally gain the power to engage in virtue. So that's first power. The second power is power of familiarization. Is it enough just to have a strong power of resolution? No. You also need the second power because you already developed the power of resolution. Everything becomes a natural process. Even if you sometimes lose your concentration or your awareness, that will remind you to go back to your practice. So in the beginning, Meditation is difficult, right? But it becomes easier. So this means training with great enthusiasm in your practice. You know, sometimes good, sometimes very bad meditation, so bad experience. And that's not the point. You just keep going, keep going. You need a great enthusiasm uh, in your practice. So... You familiarize yourself. Whatever situation comes up, using your mindfulness, you remember not to be parted from bodhicitta. So you say, example, for example, whatever I do today, I will be mindful not to let my bodhicitta diminish, something like that. In this way, you become familiarized with this wish to help all others and take care of your actions, so important, right? So that's the familiarization. Third power is power of positive seeds. This means creating as many sources of virtues as possible. In order to increase your practice, you accumulate the roots of virtue with your body, speech, and mind. So you plant seeds by observing your thoughts and emotions as well as pay attention to how you speak and your thoughts are beneficial to others. So for every time you do sit in meditation and generate uh, the love and kindness towards somebody, you plant virtuous seeds in your mental continuum. Nothing goes to waste when you plant it positive seed. It will grow more and more. In this way, it is important to start pay attention to every action you do. Positive seed. Every action makes sure that. Action means body, speech, and mind. That's it. So make sure you do something. Uh, you planted the positive seed, not negative seed. So positive seed. 
then fourth power, the power of recognizing problems. So this is understanding in terms of abandoning afflictions and other negative emotions. When they arise in your mind, you have to recognize them and try to diminish them. Recognition is called zikpa in Tibetan, which is to really know the essence of nature and the antidote. You know how to apply. If you have a negative emotions arise in your mind, you need to know that the correct antidote you have to apply. And so that is the recognition, right? Recognition means like uh, you do not involve yourself in the past and you do not involve yourself in the future, but you stay right in the very present moment. Then you have a recognition. So you should try to uh, mix your practice together with the daily activities through uh, this kind of your awareness or mindfulness, right? So through that, you can recognize the essence of your practice and you can learn your mistakes. And then uh, the last number, the, the fifth power, is power of aspiration. Aspiration is great wish and it's nothing other than your motivation. So it helps you to correct your motivation, abandon negative actions, and create positive actions. So whatever virtue uh, kind of you know activity you do, whatever um, training and the instructions you do, you know you have to uh, pray for the benefit of all beings. That's your motivation, and make sure that you dedicate something you do good. You dedicate your positive action. And you should make aspirations to be able to increase your accumulation of the root of virtues further and further for your own benefit and for the benefit of others. So whenever you uh, have sort of completed some positive actions and good things, you should pray for benefit of all, all beings. This is aspiration. This, this is very important. Aspiration is dedication. Aspiration is the motivation. So whatever you do, something uh, 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 good, not for only yourself. So you dedicate it for all sentient beings. So these five powers are means to increase our practice in bodhicitta and our ability to get rid of all obstacles that appear in our practice daily life, this five power. If you apply these five powers in your meditation and your daily life, then your practice will grow stronger and stronger. Very, I think, very important. To summarize, we can transform our behavior into virtue by employing these powers these five powers. All the instructions and profound teachings and mind training are contained within these five powers. Okay? Very important. So that's the, 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 the there are two, uh, uh, two different things, right? One is, the, this is like two sections, right? What to do during one's life. Uh, then that means that you uh, practice um, the five powers. And then next we have the what to do at death. Right? That's our life. 